Welcome to this broadcast. My name is Paul. I'm in Peterhead in Scotland. Very pleased to be here today. We are in Yeremi IR chapter 43. I do trust that we are well, staying strong under the blood in the spirit in the scripture. Um, yeah, we are in a mighty portion of the word of God. Um, this is the chapter where the persons decide for sure that they want to go into Egypt, uh, which represents the world, the flesh and the devil. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. We saw in the last couple of chapters, we saw Ishmael uh, brutally assassinate Gedaliah, who had been appointed governor of the land of Israel by the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, and we saw that Ishmael also assassinated many of the Chaldeans, the servants of the Babylonians, and killed many Jews that were in Mizpah. Um, we also so that then the uh, Israelites fled. Uh, well, first they were taken captive. Uh, now they're fleeing in this chapter to, to Egypt. But first they were taken captive uh, by Ishmael, who had assassinated with his men, Gedaliah and his men uh, in Mizpah. Ishmael then took the Yahudim captive. He was taking them to the land of Ammon, to his king, Baalis. Now, Yohanan, who initially had gone to get a lie to say, look, there's an assassination plot to kill you, and it's this Ishmael that's going to kill you. Get a liar said, no, no, that won't happen. And then, of course, get a liar ate bread with Ishmael, who's a type of Iscariote, Judas, and, and a type of the devil. Uh, it was in that social setting uh, there that uh, get a liar arose. Uh, and was killed by Ishmael and his men. And then Ishmael took lots of the Jews, uh, lots of them captive. And then Yochanan, who had attempted to rescue Gedaliah from the hand of Ishmael by warning him of the assassination attempt, I believe it was in chapter 39. Um, he had to go and rescue the Jews from Ishmael. Yes, it was chapter 40, where Yochanan had come to warn Gedaliah of the wicked Ishmael and his evil intentions of assassination and usurpation and captivity. Um, and then in chapter 41, they were eating bread together and Ishmael killed Gedaliah and then took the persons captive, the Yehudim captive, to Ammon and then Yochanan and his men rescued them. Um, And then what happens in this chapter, we see that the persons are then in great fear uh, and they want to go back to Egypt. So it's a type of uh, Christians seeking the world, the flesh and the devil to give them comfort and assurance upon the earth in time, rather than trusting alone in Yahovah for provision uh, and for peace. Uh, and for nurture and nourishment. So let's go ahead and read today's chapter, friends. Jeremiah 43. And it came to pass when Jeremiah had ended speaking to all the people, all the words of Jehovah their Elohim, which Jehovah their Elohim had sent him to them, all these words. Then spoke Azariah, the son of Hoshaiah, and Yochanan, the son of Kariah, and all the proud men, saying to Yeremiah, Thou speakest falsely. Jehovah, our Elohim, has not sent thee to say, don't go into Egypt to sojourn there. But Baruch, the son of Nerayar, is setting thee on against us to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they may put us to death and carry us away captive into Babylon. So Yochanan, the son of Kariar, and all the captains of the forces and all the people Hearken not to the voice of Jehovah to abide in the land of Yahudah. But Yochanan, the son of Keriah, and all the captains of the forces took all the remnant of Yahudah that were to return from all nations whither they had been driven to sojourn in the land of Yahudah. Men and women and children and the king's daughters 
And every person that Nebuzaradan, the captain of the bodyguard, had left with Gedaliah, the son of Ai, came, the son of Shepham, and Yeremiah, the prophet, and Baruch, the son of Neriah. And they came into the land of Egypt. For they hearken not to the voice of Yahovah, and they came as far as Tarpan Hees. And the Devar HaYahovah, the word of the Lord, came to Yeremiah in Tarpan Hees, saying, Take great stones in thy hand and hide them in the clay in the brick kiln, which is at the entry of Pharaoh's house in Tarpan Hees, in the sight of the Jews. And say to them, Thus saith Yahovah Sevaot, the Lord of Armies, Velohim Hayashirel, the God of Israel. Behold, I will send and take Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will set his throne upon these stones which I have hidden, and he shall spread his royal pavilion over them. And he shall come and smite the land of Egypt, such as are for death to death, and such as are for captivity to captivity, and such as are for the sword to the sword. And I will kindle a fire in the houses of the gods of Egypt, and he shall burn them and carry them away captive, and he shall array himself with the land of Egypt, as a shepherd putteth on his garment, and he shall go forth from thence in peace. And he shall break the pillars of Beth Shemesh, which is in the land of Egypt, and the houses of the gods of Egypt shall he burn with fire. So just a brief recap, friends, in case you didn't hear uh, yesterday's broadcast. What's going on is now uh, the persons have been rescued from the wicked Ishmael by Yochanan and his men. Um, now Yochanan and the peoples of Israel are scared. They're really scared of the Babylonians and the Chaldeans. They, they're scared for their skin, their lives, in case the Babylonians and the Chaldeans decide they had part in the assassination of Gedaliah and, and their colleagues, their fellow Chaldeans at that time in Mizpah. So they were fearful of, of, of the Babylonians, really, and the Chaldeans. So they decided the safest bet was to was to flee into Egypt. Uh, they thought they would have safety and security there. But of course, the wrath of God was accomplishing upon the earth at them upon them at this time. Uh, and what had happened is uh, Elohim Yahweh had taken away the sovereignty of Israel. Uh, all the royal family of Israel had been taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar into Babylon. And the vast majority of the woodsmen, the, the, the craftsmen, and the metal workers have been taken captive so they wouldn't be able to build or make weapons or walls. Um, and so Jerusalem was no longer the capital. Mispah had become the center of operations in Israel, and Gedaliah had been appointed governor of the land. Um, and then, as I say, we see very much a type of Judas Iscariot. Gariot, and we see the death of Gedaliah as the death of Jesus Christ. Um, and then we see great fear upon the Jews, and we see the Jews lose, not only having lost their sovereignty and having lost the one that had been appointed over them, they're then driven hither and thither, you see. They're taken captive by Judas Iscariot, as it were, the devil's servant, a deluded man, Ishmael, uh, in type. And then they're rescued by Yochanan, Yochanan, uh, John is the English for Yochanan in, in this portion of scripture is an unusual type because he represents um, good counsel and bad counsel. It's, it's most unusual. It's almost like since this is before the physical atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ, although the scope of the blood atonement, the exponential nature of the blood atonement cannot be measured. Uh, and indeed, uh, everyone on the planet at this current moment lives by way of the blood atonement. Every single creature in the air, in the ocean, upon and beneath the earth, living or dead, has and does live 
through the finished work of the Son of God, the Lord Jesus the Christ. So we're now seeing a type of the unbelieving Jews, you see, that had not believed the words of Jeremiah for many years. We're seeing a type of them driven hither and thither, ultimately because they preferred the, the voice and influence of the devil rather than the voice uh, and loving kindness of Yahovah, their God, their God and Father. You see, so they chose the darkness by rejecting Jeremiah. And so they got the darkness in the person of the wicked Ishmael who was carrying them away to the wicked Baaliz, who is definitely a type of the devil, the king of Ammon. You see, Baaliz, you can't get much more of a stark name than that. And he was the king of the land of Ammon, you see. And Ishmael was his servant, indeed, of his family, of the royal seed. Um, so we see very much a type of the unbelieving Jews being scattered and driven here and there and fleeing for safety, uh, having lost their sovereignty, having lost their appointed governor and, and even Miss Park as a place of gathering, a uh, centre in Israel. Um, they were then being taken away into Ammon to serve, to, to serve the devil, King Baileys of Ammon. Um, and now they're still in great fear because of their wickedness. So their only option, they seem to think, is to flee into Egypt, you see. And so in the previous chapter, everyone, uh, it was a wonderful broadcast that we did yesterday, we saw that everyone came to Jeremiah. And that's a type of the Son of God having authority and power and dominion. <clears throat> Pardon me. To subjugate all flesh, all nations to himself. This is absolutely um, what we're reading of here. Um, and everyone came to Jeremiah in the previous chapter. Of course, Jeremiah is one of the greatest types of the Son of God, uh, the Lord Jesus in, in the scripture. Um, and everyone came to him, it says yesterday, um, in what we read, uh, asking for intercession, mediation. Um, but really, they wanted uh, to convince God and Jeremiah that they could do their own thing and carry on living as they were living in, in their unhallowed idolatries and fornication and drunkenness and violence and extortion and, and other practices of wickedness. Something I think speak well it speaks to all of time all mortals throughout all time are entirely subject though they know it not all things serve honor and obey the lord jesus all things live through him with him for him by him and all things are doubly owned by the son of god as creator and as redeemer the living breathing word of god is the life in every creature, sustaining the planet, the sun, the moon, the stars, the oxygen, the gravity, everything is sustained by Jehovah Elohim. So we saw a great chapter yesterday where all the peoples came to him. Um, oh yes, pray to Jehovah, seek Jehovah for us, ask the Lord what the best thing is, we'll do it. We will serve the Lord. Oh, yes, whatever you say, we will do. Ten days later, Jeremiah comes to all the peoples. Yes, I've heard from Yahovah. What did he say? Well, definitely don't go to Egypt. If you go there, you will starve. You'll be killed um, and you'll suffer great persecution. Don't do it. Stay here and I will establish you. I'll give you peace uh, and you'll be all right here. And then in this chapter... It's a most disturbing chapter, really, because um, Jeremiah had, had, had interceded and sought Yehovah and once again had delivered faithfully the word of truth that was able to save their souls, the engrafted word of God. He had spoken the word of Yehovah. Um, and you would think after all those things that the people would say, oh, let's, let's now obey the word of the Lord. Of course, Yahweh knew they would not, but mercy was remembered in wrath. 
loving kindness in judgment and goodness in fury. It's almost like a gospel call was given through Jeremiah, good news of peace, pardon, power. But the people really wanted to serve themselves. They wanted to serve the world, the flesh and the devil, really. They didn't want to do the will of God. And who do, how many folk do on the earth? Of course, there are, God has his persons throughout time. But in verity and truth, listeners, how many men or women do you know that get up in the morning and say, Lord God omnipotent, what is your will for me today in truth? How many men or women do you know that truly, truly do the will of God? Now, there's two sides to this. This is the moral, rational faculties in practical obedience to the revealed will of God. And the, the answer is, uh, as regards seeking and asking, uh, I, every morning, very, very, very few. That's the truth. But the other side of things is Elohim, Yahweh does whatsoever he pleaseth. All things serve him. Uh, that's the mystery of it, the absolute sovereignty, the goodly loving kindness, both providential and covenantal of God Almighty to all flesh. So there's two sides to it. But as regards persons that actually see and with specificity, God, what's my next step? Who do you want me to ring? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? Very, very, very few. Now, so these persons that beseech Jeremiah, oh, intercede for us, find out what the Lord wants us to do. Oh, yes, I'll intercede for you. Ten days later, proper period of, of intercession and mediation and beseechment and supplication. Yeremiah comes to the people that had not listened to him for years, that had tried to kill him for years, that had threatened him and beaten him, <clears throat> put him in the stocks for periods of time, thrown him in a stench-filled, vermin-filled dungeon to die sinking in the in the poo and he came to them yes i've heard from yahovah oh yes this is what yahovah says stay here be established have peace have well-being if you go to egypt you will die of persecution famine and the sword and here we are in this chapter and it's most it's 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 really a chapter about persons that disbelieve the Son of God. It's really, this chapter is about human beings that they know the Son of God is real. You know, they've all, all of them came to the Son of God, to Jeremiah. Um, all of them came to him and all of them gave uh, lip service. Oh, yes, whatever you say, Jeremiah, we'll do it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, whatever you say. But at the end of yesterday's chapter, we saw the, the last verse. Uh, Jeremiah says, you've deceived yourselves and your own souls. Self-deception, friends. Self-delusion. What is delusion? Well, it's believing confusion. Mortals become confused uh, because they're fused with the devil. You see, the sinful nature, the prince of the power of the air that works in the children of disobedience. You see, that's what that means. It's like psychopath. God's size, the son of God's sigh, because they have a co-path, a path in partnership with the devil. Psychopathy, you see. Sociopathy, you see. Homicide, you see, suicide, you see, that's the devil. All these things are, are works of the devil, you see. Much more could be said about these words. You get the general gist. Now, so here we have the same persons in the previous chapter had made a great show 
of all of them coming to Jeremiah and pleading with Jeremiah for intercession, for mediation. Oh, please ask Yahweh what we should do. Remember, they just had years of brutal beseechment and torture and starvation uh, and fear whilst being besieged by the Babylonians and the Chaldeans in Jerusalem and elsewhere in Yashirel. Um, and then they'd lost. The Babylonians, the Chaldeans, had broken into Jerusalem and taken over the country. Then a proxy government was set up, uh, Gedaliah. They had to obey Gedaliah and Nebuzaradan, the chief bodyguard of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. Uh, and then Ishmael had come and killed Gedaliah and killed a lot of Jews and killed a lot of Chaldeans and then dragged thousands of them off to the land of Ammon. And then one of their own, Yochanan, and his men had come and rescued them. There had been another big battle there. Uh, and now they're in great fear. And then they beseeched Jeremiah, who they'd ignored for years. <clears throat> they'd not listened to the Devar. Elohim Yahweh, the word of Elohim Yahweh, um, for years, properly. Um, and here they are going to him now. Let's see what they say. It came to pass when Jeremiah had ended speaking to the people all the words of Jehovah their God, which Jehovah their God had sent him to them. With which Jehovah their God had sent him to them all these words. Then spoke Azariah, the son of Hoshiah, and Yochanan, the son of Kari, and all the proud men, saying to Yedemiah, thou speakest falsely. Yehovah, our Elohim, has not sent thee to say, go not into Egypt to sojourn there. And Baruch, the son of Neriah, is setting thee on against us to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they may put us to death and carry us away captives into Babylon. So we see very clearly here, friends, disobedience, rebellion, fear, confusion, and delusion. Think of that person's coming to the Son of God and saying, no, no, you speak falsely. Of course, this is a type of the Yahudim that disbelieved the Son of God, even in the presence of persons that were truly dead, truly being made alive. Persons that truly didn't have arms or legs or hands that suddenly did have brand new arms, legs and hands. In the presence of persons that were truly properly blind, that could properly see. In the presence of a man that truly walked across the sea, not across a stream, across a sea. In the presence of a man that had fed several thousand miraculously and single-handedly several times, they still did not believe in the Son of God. And here is the great Yeremiah, who for years had declared the truth that sets men free. He'd faithfully proclaimed the word of the Lord for all these years. They'd all besought his intercession, his mediation, but they didn't really believe in Jeremiah. They didn't really believe in God. You see, friends, the Greek, as some of our listeners will know, the Greek word for believe is trust in, cleave to, and rely upon. That's why James says the devils believe and they tremble. Of course, that's a different word for believe, but the principle is that it's not enough to say, I believe. I could say to you, well, I believe there's steak, not that I eat meat, but I could say, I believe there's steak in the, in the fridge. Um, but if I didn't know, then it's just a belief, you see. So therefore, obedience is the evidence of belief. You see, if you trust and cleave to and rely upon your eternal triune bridegroom, then that will mean your practical obedience, actual subjection, uh, and actual complete obedience to the king of the whole planet. 
you see. Now, so these persons now come and they say, you speak falsely to Jeremiah. So they're saying to Jeremiah that you're lying. It's like the Jews, they said, we know who you are. You're the son of Joseph, you know, the natural mind, you see. Yehovah, our God has not sent you to say, go not into Egypt to sojourn there. They wanted to do their own will. And then, of course, they then said to Jeremiah that Baruch, his friend, the son of Neriyane, Baruch, was a very good man. He was the man that had physically, he was a scribe. Scribes in those days were very rare and very highly esteemed and well respected because they were the ones that could read and write. And of course, anyone that could read and write could teach reading and writing. Uh, and so they were very much, uh, very much persons that were celebrated at that time because not many persons could read and write. And Baruch had twice written out this entire book that we just studied. You might remember, friends, that, that one of the kings uh, had burned the entire book um, of Jeremiah that had been written out by Baruch by the mouth of Jeremiah. He tossed it in the fire pan in his summer house. Um, and here we are today, these persons um, disbelieving the word of the Lord. Not, not dissimilar, um, but, but deceiving uh, themselves. And here they were uh, in unbelief against Jeremiah. And it's stark to think that Yochanan, who had warned Gedaliah of the assassination attempt, um, he had then gone and fought with his men against Ishmael, no doubt a bloody terrible battle to rescue the thousands of Jews that were being carried away captive into Ammon. And here he is uh, declaring that Jeremiah had told lies, that the Lord hadn't said, don't go into Egypt. So th this would be a type of I think in the modern era of these charismatical Christians that say oh well it's all right to get tattoos or it's okay to get drunk or it's okay to dress and talk like the world you know or it's okay to pursue money oh that's all okay see um, it, it'd be a type of that and anyone that speaks against such things Oh, no, no, you're not speaking right. Oh, no, that's not right. We can just do this and we can just do that or we'll be all right. No, no. Well, the world, the flesh, the devil, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. So we have Azariah and Yochanan saying to Jeremiah, you're speaking falsely. God has not said, don't go into Egypt. Um, and furthermore, they suggested that Baruch uh, wanted their death and to be carried away captive into Babylon. So they feared captivity, but actually they were already in captivity in their hearts and minds to the devil, to the voice of the devil, you see. So it's a more stark thing to contemplate uh, that mortals at the present time believe themselves free, but are actually deceived. The problem with deceived mortals is they deceive other mortals. The deceived are deceiving deceivers. That's the problem, you see. Whereas those that walk in the truth and hurt people hurt people. But those that walk in the truth, they are truth tellers. They think the truth, speak the truth and walk in the truth, you see. But these persons, they were self-deceived uh, and they didn't believe the truth, nor did they believe in the Son of God. They ultimately rejected the salvation of the Son of God. 
they rejected the salvation of God in the mouth of Jeremiah. So, so they, they rejected the salvation, the loving kindness, the deliverance, the preservation, the establishment of Yahweh. You see, and so they were disestablished. So they didn't listen to the voice of Yahuvah to stay in the land of Yahudah. So what happens next is Yochanan, the son of Kariah, he took everyone. Into Egypt, Yochanan took everybody, including Jeremiah and Baruch. Everybody, men, women, children, the king's daughters, Every single person was taken into Egypt by Jochen. So they came into the land of Egypt. They listened not to the voice of Yahweh. They came as far as Tarpan Hees. Now, it means the word literally means that, out of the frying pan into the fire. You see, tar, tartarus, tar, pan, ease. So they, it was said to Peter, Satan has desired to sift thee as wheat. You see, um, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And here um, they came to tar, pan, ease. So not a good place, not a good place to be, Tarpan Hees. So the Devar Yehovah, the word of the Lord, came to Yeremiah in Tarpan Hees, saying, Take great stones in thy hand, hide them in the clay in the brick kiln, which is at the entry of Pharaoh's house in Tarpan Hees, in the sight of the Yahudim, the Jews. And say to them, Thus says, Yehovah Sevaot Ve'elohim Ha'yawah Ve'elohim Ha'yashirel Thus says Yehovah of armies, the God of Israel, look, behold, I will send and take Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will set his throne upon these stones which I have hidden, and he shall spread his royal pavilion over them. So just like that, in the absolute sovereignty and righteousness and holiness and justice and goodliness, of Elohim Yahweh, God says, okay, right, O oh, Jeremiah, get these big stones, go and put them there, hide them. Let everyone see you doing it. Hide them in this brick kiln at the entry of Pharaoh's house in Tarpanese. And then say to them, in the same way that I've hidden these stones here, in this exact same way, the king of Babylon is coming here to Egypt and he's going to kill and take captives. Those that are for death to death and those are for the sword to the sword. Just like that. And indeed, that's what, that's what happens. And so you see the absolute uh, sovereignty of God in this chapter. You see, the Jews now were under terrible wrath because they disregarded and disbelieved the Son of God. You know, uh, a man, Jeremiah, who was well established as the voice of God at that time in that place over many years, probably one of the most prolific uh, and enduring prophets, uh, you know, and uh, they all knew that the voice of Yahovah was with Jeremiah but they'd chosen to disbelieve it for years. And here they are um, in rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ in Egypt, in Tarpan Hees. They thought they would be safe there. And Jeremiah takes these stones. Okay, right, everyone, see these stones? Yes, just put them there, right? In the same way, the king of Babylon's coming here to Egypt and he's going to kill and he's going to slaughter, he's going to take you captive to Babylon.
and I will kindle a fire in the... Now, these last two verses are very special, friends. I'll kindle a fire in the house of the gods of Egypt, and he shall burn them. Carry them away captive, and he shall array himself with the land of Egypt, as a shepherd puts on his garment, but he shall go forth from thence in peace. And he shall break the pillars of Beth Shemesh, Beth House Shemesh. You see, it's like when you're fused with somebody, the sinful nature, allegiance with the devil in the knowledge of evil, when you're enmeshed, Shemesh. See the woman, Shemesh, mankind, Beth Shemesh, the house Shemesh the sinful nature. So this is all a type of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, the finished work of the Son of God. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many. The mystery is that the God-man, the Lord Jesus, has all knowledge and understands everything uh, and has destroyed the doomed, deluded, wily, vile, devile, irreversibly. There's no redemption for the devil, friends. There's no salvation for the devil. The devil is responsible for sickness, sorrow, suffering of everyone that's ever walked this planet. One day all flesh will see the devil and they'll say, is this him? You mean him? Oh yes, it's him over there. He's responsible for the death and sorrow and sickness and suffering of everyone who's ever walked the planet. Bind him hand and foot and cast him alive into the lake of sulfurous brimstone and eternal capital punishment. The smoke of his torment will descend before me night and day forever. So this is the future for the devil, see? But before that, he's got a thousand years chained in the pitch darkness of the bottomless abyss. Imminently. Now, but before that, he shall see the physical resurrection, the immortalization of hundreds of millions of true Christians that will suddenly burst forth in the tombs and immediately be clothed with immortality, physical immortality. And that, my friends, is the next great event on this planet. It's not a new car, or a new sexual encounter, or a new drunkenness, or a new settee, or a new carpet. It's the physical immortalization of hundreds of millions of human beings. That's the next great event on this planet. Now, <laughs> Elohim Yahweh says, not only will the king of Babylon come to Egypt and kill and take captive, he's going to destroy the gods of Egypt. Who are the gods of Egypt? Well, the doomed, deluded, ruined, self-deceived, wicked spirits. You see? And they'll be burned and carried away captive. And then the king of Babylon will array himself with the land of Egypt as a shepherd puts on his garment. So this is the sovereignty of the Son of God. He shall go forth from thence in peace. It's, it's, a most, it's a most remarkable portion of scripture, really. Um, and it uh, definitely, of course, this is Jeremiah 4, 3, 1, 2. We, it's the work of the Son of God in the complete destruction of all the works of the devil. Um, and the absolute sovereignty of the Son of God. We see the most unusual type in the King of Babylon. Um, whereas with Pharaoh, he was more distinctly a type of the devil and wicked men, bedeviled men, ruling upon earth. Uh, really a type of bedeviled mankind. You know, whereas the King of Babylon 
Um, he's more of an unusual type. He, 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 and you see this very much in, in the book of Daniel. Um, you see the king of Babylon, which hopefully on this channel eventually will come to the book of Daniel. But in, in that wonderful tome, you see very much uh, the king of Babylon as being a dualistic type. You see devilish characteristics and you see godly characteristics. You see the king of Babylon commands everyone to bow down to his idol, to his statue. <clears throat> and the Hebrew children refuse. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego refuse to bow down. So the king of Babylon casts them into the fiery furnace. The son of God is in the fire with them. And there's not even the smell of fire on them. They're delivered. Then, of course, Daniel is cast in the lion's den. But after those terrible events, um, the king of Babylon becomes converted to Yahovah Elohim, the God of heaven and the God of earth, um, and commands all the, all the Babylonians to obey Yahovah Elohim, the God of the Hebrews, the God of Israel. Um, but anyway, it's... Um, what I'm trying to say is the, the king of Babylon does have characteristics, both good and bad, uh, and, and is the sovereign at this time of history. The sovereignty of Israel is gone, and uh, the king of Babylon was stronger than the, the, than the pharaoh of Egypt, you see. Um, so it's a type of mankind under the sovereignty of God. And here we see the king of Babylon um, coming to rule over Egypt, to destroy all, the, all and undo all the works of the doomed, deluded devils, um, and arraying himself with the land of Egypt. It's a type of Christ in resurrection, um, arraying himself, the rock of ages. The rock of ages who became a quarry, that men could become living stones. The rock rolled away from the door and the rock of ages out of the freshly hewn rocky tomb to Miriam of Magdala, out of whom seven demons had been cast. Go tell my brothers and sisters, I have done it. I have obtained eternal redemption. Go tell them I ascend to my father, to your father, to my God, to your God. A different garden a different woman thousands of years before. She presented the first man with the knowledge of evil and allegiance with the devil. And he listened and he took it. Just as she'd listened to the devil and took it, the man listened to the woman and took the knowledge of evil, brought the wrath of God upon him, the curse of sin and death upon all mankind. Another man, another garden, not my will, but thy will be done. He sweat as it were great drops of blood. Not my will, but thy will be done. And then later, arisen out of the tomb, she thought he was the gardener. We read in Zechariah, I am no prophet, I am a gardener, a tiller of the ground. Man has had me as his servant from my youth. What are those wounds in thy hands? Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. The only thing man made in heaven is the wounds in the Son of God. His face was more marred than any man's. The beard was all ripped out his back as a bloody 20 pound slab of mincemeat nailed naked bleeding out suffocatively held only by the nails for hours and hours and hours whilst being mocked and spat upon surrounded by gaping demons the bulls of Bashan but on that day, the Son of God dealt with everything, friends. The chastisement of your peace fell upon him. By his stripes, you are healed. 
he became a sin and became sins in his own body upon the tree that ye may become righteous and go free. This is salvation. This is redemption. This is life eternal to believe upon the Son. Either he or she that believeth upon the Son hath eternal life, shall in no way come into condemnation, but has passed from death unto life. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of God and drink the blood of the Son of God, you have no life in you. For his flesh is food indeed, and his blood is drink indeed. Go tell my brethren, I have sent to my father and to your father, to my God and to your God. Wondrous message, friends. The greatest messages this earth has ever heard. The rock of ages, the ancient of days, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the one who is every man, woman and child upon this planet. The one who is every atom, neutron, proton, macron and nucleus. The one who is truly every man and every one. The man who is God. Arraying himself with the land of Egypt. He kindled a fire upon the earth. He came not to bring peace, but to bring a sword. To bring fire. The fire has been kindled, friends. Don't be found as Peter, getting a warmth around the fire, self-deceived and deceiving others. Oh, I don't know him. No, no, I don't know him. Effing and jaffing. Oh, no, I don't know him. Here was Peter. I don't know him. Oh, we know you was with him. Oh, no, I wasn't with him. Oh, but we know you was. I was not, ra ra ra, And then the cock crowed three times, friends. He was warming around the wrong fire. Friends, don't go after the world, the flesh, the devil, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Be faithful. Be strong, be courageous. Persevere and endure. These are all the gifts of God. Friends, money is worthless. Only relationship with the Son of God can make a man or a woman rich. Jesus said, I counsel you to buy from me gold purified by fire. In one of the uh, seven letters contained in the book of Revelation. Know ye not, you say you are rich, but know ye not, you are the poor, the wretched, the naked. You need the eye salve of the Holy Spirit. Sirs, we would see Jesus. But now we see Jesus. Exalted at the right hand of the majesty. So we have the Son of God in resurrection. Having undone and destroyed all the works of the demons. And all the demons being burned in eternal fire. Smoke of their torment ascending forever and ever. The Son of God arraying himself in the land of Egypt. All flesh entirely subject. All mortals entirely subject to the sovereignty of Elohai Yahuwah. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many. As a shepherd putteth on his garment. One of the promises to the son of the father's love is as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments or as a bride decks herself with ornaments, so shall you clothe yourself with everyone. And that is the truth. The Lord Jesus is everyone, everywhere right now. Arraying himself with the land of Egypt as a shepherd puts on his garment. He shall go forth from thence in peace. It's one of the most, one of the most, could I say, mystical, mysterious references to Christ in resurrection. Um, and of course, uh, the type 
of Christ here as the king of Babylon. Most unusual. Um, and it's the destruction and ruination of the wicked Egyptian system. You see that had brutally, brutally oppressed and enslaved tens of thousands of men and women and children over a long period of time. And of course, we see the evidence of that is the, the pyramids. In the modern era, wealthy folks go to look and gaze at the pyramids that were made by brutal, brutal enslavement and torture and starvation and death. Oh, yes, look at the pyramids. Evidence of brutality and wickedry. Oh, yes, wonderful, aren't they? Oh, we like them. Oh, yes. The Son of God in sovereignty, putting on his garment. That's Christ in resurrection. Going forth from thence in peace, in shalom and well-being. Of the increase of my peace and of the increase of my rule, there shall be no end. It is written, I doth reign on David's throne, upholding righteousness. Our God shall accomplish this. He shall be called <clears throat> wonderful. Counselor, mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, is written, of the increase of his peace, of the increase of his rule, there shall be no end. It is written, the place of my feet shall be glorious. Yes. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, friends. And every tongue that riseth against you in judgment you shall condemn. For this is the inheritance of the servants of Yahovah, and their righteousness is from me, saith Yahovah. Of course, we read in Romans 1, the righteousness of God is revealed from heaven from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. And he shall break the pillars of Beth. Shemesh, open your hearts, open the gates, ye open up the everlasting doors, and the King of Glory shall come in. Who is this King of Glory? Yahovah Elohim is the King of Glory. Melech Hakavod, King of Glory. Elohim Hakavod, the God of Glory. And Adonai Hakavod, the Lord of Glory. Breaking the pillars of Beth Shemesh, the house that she meshed when she took the knowledge of evil and entered into allegiance with the vile, deluded demons. The house Shemesh. Beth Shemesh. The woman, the wife, the bride, Christ, set free through the sufferings, through the atonement of the Son of God. The Son of God in resurrection, having wrought eternal redemption, brought in everlasting righteousness, taken away the sin of the whole world. He shall break the pillars of Beth Shemesh, in the earth of Egypt. So the word for Egypt is Mitzrayim. And the houses of the gods of Egypt shall be burned with fire. So that's a reference. Houses, tents, and temples in scripture speak of the physical body. So the houses of the gods of Egypt would be human beings that are inhabited by demons and are under the influence and control of demons. Um, so that would include persons that are committed to wicked, twisted sexual practices like men inserting their genitalia into other men's anuses. That's pretty much the most wicked thing upon earth. Certainly one of the most, one of the three most wicked things on earth. Uh, closely followed by women 
through lie with other women, uh, but unrepentant persons who do such things. All these things uh, are uh, wicked, sheer wickedness. You know, so persons that are uh, houses of the demons will be burned with fire. The solution is the blood of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the loving kindness of Jesus, the authority and goodness of God in Christ. And so it is a most marvellous chapter, friends, when you um, refer it to all the portions of scripture and other clear Christian doctrine. And indeed, the Son of God in resurrection, uh, kindling a fire. In the, in the houses of the gods of Egypt. So kindling a fire, judgment and wrath in the lives and bodies of the unrepentant, the unbelieving, the children of the devil. They will all be burned in the fire. But Christ has taken captivity captive. Um, all flesh, all nations that were captive by the devil has now been taken captive by the Son of God. Christ is the double owner of all flesh as creator and as redeemer. All flesh is currently subject to the Son of God. All nations, all mortals are possessions. a most glorious chapter it really is and it's this simple simple as putting the stones in the brick kiln at the entry of pharaoh's house in tarpan he's so that's wicked mortals they're in the brick kiln uh, at the entry of the devil's house in tarpan he's which means they're in the pan waiting to go into the fire. And just like that, the sovereignty of Yahovah is demonstrated once again, friends, with clarity and simplicity and prudence and discretion and visdeem. What Elohai Yahuwah deems is what happens in every place upon this orb. This orb, this planet, fits in the palm of the hand, friends. All mortals are subject, creature, possessions. Fear not. Fear not their fear, friends. Do not fear the devil or men. Men and devils, they don't know how to do good, and they're unable to do evil without the sovereignty of God. So this type here at the End of that. Jeremiah 43, we see the Son of God in resurrection, kindling a fire in the bodies of the children of the devil. We see upon the cross, three men upon the cross that day, friends, three men. And everyone who's ever lived was upon those three crosses that day. There's the Son of God himself. There's all the damned, the permanently damned, the wicked, in type, the unrepentant thief to the left-hand side. And then there's the lamb's wife, the redeemed. Now, of course, they were in Christ, but they're also represented by the third man on the cross. He saw purity and holiness and deity. He saw God in Christ, redeeming the world to himself. That third man on the cross, Lord, Adonai, Curios, remember me when thou comest into thine paradise. This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. The last minute he'd previously been a mocker. There they were, the three of them, suffering and dying. The Son of God, vicariously, substitutionary sacrifice. 
entering into death itself to destroy him that had the power of death, the devil. Having undone all the works of the devil. Everyone was dealt with that day, friends, 2,000 years ago. And now all things are entirely subject to the Son of God, Christ in resurrection, like a shepherd putting on his garment. Just like that, friends, and he shall go forth from thence in peace, the Prince of Peace, the Melech HaShalom, the King of Peace, breaking the pillars of Beth, Shemesh, in the land of Mitzrayim, the houses of the gods of Egypt, shall he burn with fire. Well, we'll be back soon with another broadcast, friends. Until then, let me assure you, Hyrcanus, the sovereignty, the power, the authority of Elohai Yahuwah, and the authority of his son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, is over all nations and all mortals. Baruch Hava Adonai Yehovah Elohayayim.